It's always the same when I have lunch with John Foster. I don't know, there's something about him that stops me going when he's there. They didn't mind me not coming. I just had to get to the shops so there's people coming tonight. People? Dorothy's conservationist. Oh. It's a fundraising effort. I did tell you. Yeah, you told me, you told me. I forgot. Why can't Dorothy have in her own damned house? I'm looking forward to putting my feet up tonight. Good lunch? Apart from forgetting to go. It's never a good lunch when your client wants to pay. It means he's got bad news to drop on you. Rastrix have cut back on their cement order. They've got a driver's strike or something. Could go on for months. What will it mean? It means we have to cut back on production. It's the lowest we've ever known. Max will be yelling for redundancies. And we'll have a strike on our bloody hands. I feel like stopping up here and letting them all get on me. For God's sake, relax. I hate being in the dark. Frightened of the dark, Max. You know what I mean. He thinks if he can keep us all in ignorance, we can't unite against him. Would you want to? He is your father. I want to know what this lunch is all about. What he's cooking up with John Foster. Well, why should he be cooking anything? Foster's only a customer. My father knows Foster far too well to describe him as only a customer. He's had a hell of a long lunch. He's been taking your mother shopping as well. You ought to spend more time doing just that. Retire, you mean? Yes, retire. Leave the firm in younger hands. More capable. I wonder, does Henry think that? Do you remember when we used to come up here to get away from your mother before we were wed? <laughs> She'd have gone spare if she knew what we used to get up to up here. Dad knew, I think, or guessed. Dad was a local village lad like me. Married a finishing school accent. So did you. Well, as much as they could din into me. I did better than him. I married a woman. Hey, what were you doing at the doctor's? I saw you come out. You can see his door through the bar window at Spread Eagle. Just the usual tablets. Can't get them, except on prescription. That was the reason you started taking them in the first place, wasn't it? When you thought I'd strayed five years back. It was a fuss the others made, not you. I know how far you strayed. Do you? Not as far as the talk in the village. Ah, it was that the penned you most, wasn't it? Who said it did? Oh, uh, Max, Dorothy, they both had a go at me. I laughed at it. You know I did. Mm, pretended to, they said. I laughed. I knew. Better than they did. You've got me all sewn up, haven't you? Have I? You know damn well you have. I never went back, you know. Well, the Black Lion was a nice pub. I just felt it home in it. Go back, if you want. They've had their talk. Nothing will ever convince them it was other than what they think it was. Go back and pretend you're a wicked old man. If it pleases you. Got me all sewn up. <laughs> Come on, I'll run you home. I've got to get back to the plant before they close to sign me letters. Uh, don't
don't say anything about Rastrix to Max. I want the weekend to chew on it. I miss Ross when things go wrong, you know. Across the yard. What do you mean, it's all right? You letting go of the chair like a hot potato. You said once he didn't like anybody else sitting in it. Hangs on to it like he hangs on to the reins, you said. He damn well does that, doesn't he? He's aged a lot these last three years or so. What's slower? A breezy walk of his, it's gone. Walks now as if he was afraid of treading on something. He ought to retire, except... Except what? I can't think of one good reason why I shouldn't retire. Except what? I was going to say, except it'll probably kill him. Jim. And right. She's coming on. Have we got that propeller shaft cover in yet? Came last month. Haven't got it on yet. When's the vote for the closed shop, Jim? Tomorrow. What's the likely outcome, do you reckon? I don't know when we've counted what likely outcome is, won't we? Fresh faces every month. I don't know half these people coming past me. <laughs> Your mother's using them steps again, you know, by the way. Obstinate bloody woman. Taking the curtains down this morning. To wash, I suppose. She knew I'd seen her and all. Trying to hide back out the netting. There's nothing I'd tell her. Sent three packing last year that I got to clean for her. Well, you'll be obstinate when you get past 80. Yeah. Not only you, though, is it? Runs in Brassington blood, I reckon. Have you noticed your mother lately? Noticed? Her colour. She seems to have lost that lovely, fresh look she always had. She's well enough, isn't she? Just a bit run down, probably. I'll ask her, shall I? If you do, she'll just tell you what she thinks you want to know. Leo. Sarah? Henry, uh, not around. He's back. He's out in the work somewhere. Oh. Oh, uh, did Dorothy ring you? May have done. I've been out all day. Mm, usual thing. Wanted to ask what you'll be wearing at this do at Henry's tonight. <laughs> Really? What's it in aid of, anyway? Conservationists are oh, Dorothy's pets. No, seriously. She'll do half a dozen quick changes before we even leave the house if she doesn't know what you're wearing. <laughs> Something with trousers, probably. Ah, Sarah. Sorry I'm late. I want to run your mother room. Which of you two wants me first? I do. Ah, how about you, Sarah? Oh, I just come to collect my husband. Oh, I thought maybe you'd come collect his wages. <laughs> we had women that used to. Can you wait a minute while I pay a call? Uh, you can keep me company. I can wait till morning. You must have a damn good bladder then. I shan't be a minute. Come on, come, come on. Decisions don't have to wait on nature. Seems pretty needed to me. He makes damn sure of it by keeping us half informed. That's why Ross fell out with him. One reason, anyway. You'd do it differently, of course. I delegate genuinely. He doesn't. But he's pulled you through this awful time you've been having. By selling out and practically every demand of the workforce. He's more like Ross than he knows. It's a battle and he's in retreat. Don't it all have to be so tough? It's a tough world, Sarah. The hard word comes from both sides now. The battle lines are drawn. It'd destroy him to go. Rubbish! My God, the sex that wants equality. But we're not talking about equality. We're talking about humanity. We're talking about something else too, Sarah. We're talking about survival. Hello, Henry. 
Hello, Jack. Mother! Who's that with you? Women. You were talking to outside. Oh, I said hello to Jack Daniels. <laughs> On your way to the pub, I suppose. Pub? Doris Armstrong's place, is it? Black Lion. I don't go in there. You know I don't. Why do you call it Doris Armstrong's place, any road? You know very well that Jesse keeps it now. We all will be Doris Armstrong's place to my generation. What's left of us? It's about a tombstone that once she's got in Ladston Cemetery. Her flowers get watered more often. I dare say they do. I thought I smelt gas when I came in. Well, you didn't. I know what gas smells like. Just because I let milk boil over and put it out that once, you're forever on about it. I worry about your mother. Well, it'd have been in heaven now if you hadn't turned up. Oh. Don't you want me to go to heaven? Keep your own house in order, do you? I try to. Oh, well, let me do the same. Climbing ladders and all. Mm, Jim Turner been tattletailing again, has he? I thought he would. Curry in favour. No, he's never done that with me. Jim Tother rode round with anything. But he's your neighbour. He was being neighbourly, that's all. Steps at your age. You ought to be climbing stairs, let alone ladders. You ought to have stayed at the bungalow when Dad died. There was nobody I cared to know at that end. I came back down here where I'm known, where you were born, where I belonged. There's not many a day passes as I don't have my visit from somebody in the street. Ah. Uh, Is my rate due yet? No, I've seen to that. Well, I'll put them on one side. Uh, you've never learnt, have you, Mother? Learned what? To spend, damn it. Dad's estate lying there intact. You can't take it with you, Mother. <laughs> I'd more put away than you'd have knew about. Oh. He'd have turned scarlet pink if he'd have known what I'd put on one side for a rainy day. <laughs> I had it in two places. One he knew about. He kept helping himself now and again for a pint when he thought I wasn't looking. <laughs> so I kept topping that one up so he wouldn't start looking for the other. <laughs> eh, with some fun in them days. Sin was a pleasure, not a convenience. You don't eat enough, Mother. Oh, I can't get it down. I was a big woman once. Uh, Off to the pub, are you? You've asked me that once. Have I? You're looking old. I shall see you out yet, the way this cage of mine clings on to life. What are they doing to you at that place? Well, they'd like me gone, I reckon. Who oh, would? Max would. Others, too, I dare say. Jean would like me to pack it in, have me to chauffeur for her, take the dog for a walk. Pack it in, then. Leave them to it. And who's to follow me? It'll be war again when Mac's in charge. Well, what about Ross? Oh, Ross and me have fallen out. He's uh, doing very well with the parent company now. They think a great deal of him down there. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. I forget things sometimes. My mind slips sometimes, do. I looked at you just now, sitting there, and you were 16 year old. Yeah, but uh, 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 I think I'd better be going, Mother. Dorothy's got one of her charity parties on. It's conservationist, so I better show my face. So they sit up on Stennett Hill, looking at the plant through binoculars like MI5, waiting for us to put a foot wrong. I've lived here all my life. I care more for what the place looks like than they do. Oh, Oh, Jim. Uh, so you're back outside. <laughs> There's something I meant to tell you back there I forgot. Uh, this vote on the clothes shop tomorrow. Your know, lad's been doing a bit of crowing, saying we'll not get it through. It's been passed around and a lot of the lads don't like it. Where was this? When? Oh, last uh, couple of weeks or so. That puppy goes in. You don't want a clothes shop? Don't I? You've said so often enough. Why come telling the tale to me? I like company business done where it should be, not in pubs. He's done the damage now, any road. You'll look well if he swings the vote for us. Yeah, well, he's got his way of doing things. I have mine. Ah, but it's his way that we'll have to contend with before all that long now, isn't it? You will. You'll be retired before then. It'll be on somebody else's shoulders. You reckon you see me out, do you? I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> it's enough to contend with without you going on at him. 
They voted me Union Branch Secretary to go on at him and on the Works Committee. He could do a lot worse, you know, Mabel. You ask him. He'd not complain if I was the only thorn in his flesh. Been tattletailing again and all, haven't you? Ah, oh, and I will again if I see you up them ladders. Well, I'm not your mother. No, but you like her. Or like she was. Awkward. Mrs. Arrot. Henry does. Ah. Well, he's not the only one that misses him. Do the bread makes it damned hard work for me. not here. Well, they left the works before I did. Well, he's got a crate of dry ginger in his con. We need it. It'll be over an hour or more before anybody comes. Well, anyway, everything else is ready. She ought to have got somebody in to help, really. She's been at it all day. It's uh, your lot, isn't it, the people who are coming? Your lot, too, now. I yeah. made you a member. Max joined. Said he thought it'd be a good idea if you were both members. Enlightened desecrators. What's that supposed to mean? Actually, we should have had it at our pace, but you make such a fuss. It's the fuss I object to. He said you were wearing trousers. It, that's what I told him. I changed my mind. Sorry. Haven't seen Dad, have you? Well, your mother was asking that. He's probably dropped in at Graham's, don't you think? Max said he'd ring and find out. And where's Max? In the kitchen with your mother. Sorry about the dress. Landed me in it again. Again? How intriguing. When was the last time? <laughs> Drink? Yes, why not? Don't ask for anything with dry ginger in it. Henry's got it in his boot. I'll have a gin and tonic. It's going to be a gin and tonic evening, isn't it? <laughs> Don't you like gin and tonic evenings? Not the evenings, and I wouldn't have thought you did either. Dad called at Grand's. He left a few minutes ago. Ready for the fray? Well, there's no specific complaint against the plant at the moment, have they? I mean, uh, apart from the usual one that is there. Oh, they all be off Comdens. Retired people, most of them, I dare say. A few cranks left here, too. Not good, solid local stock. Like you, you mean? Well, of course, my love. Of course. Born and bred. Not like us. <laughs> oh, not like us. We're off Comdens, outsiders. No more right to be here than the packies have in Bradford, in your terms, I suppose. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't put it quite like that. How would you put it? Ah. <laughs> She's trying to snare me with her intellect now, trying to get me to come out with some power-like statement so she can pin one of her little labels on me, see how she operates. You're not going to fall for it, though, are you, Max? No, my love, I'm not. If you want to identify with the packies in Bradford by being an off Comden, well, if the cap fits, bloody won't wear it. <laughs> and I'll wear mine. Sorry, I didn't know anyone was here. I hope you've not been waiting too long. Jess? How are you, Jess? Well, stone the bloody crows. It's Brassington. You're sure I can't help you? When does Guy come home from school? Monday, thank God. Missed him? Oh, oh. well, <laughs> of course you have. Still doesn't like it there, you know. Max said he did. Tells Max what Max wants to hear. He tells me the truth. I don't think Max liked it all that much, you know. Well, there you are, you see. He always tells me he did. I suppose it's justified any guy there. Ross hated it. Oh, <laughs> Ross would. Henry always wanted to bring him home. He used to misery about it in the car all the way back. And what about you? I was brought up to believe it was the finest thing I could do for them. The unselfish thing. Deprive myself of their company. Did you still think that when they came back? 
I've never been sure they ever did come back. Where is that man? Must be another since Max rang his grandmother. Oh, do you want me to go and look for him? Do you know where he is? No. Not much point then, is it? Not back in his two-day blinders again, is he? No, we have heard. Does he seem to you to have got a lot older suddenly? No, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> have I? I've felt as if I have these last few years. Oh, work. I Getting home at night, bushed, falling asleep in front of the telly. Max doesn't. Max hums like a little dynamo until his head hits the pillow. Max isn't human. You meant that, didn't you? Gone back to your old bad habits. <laughs> what makes you think that? The way you sit in that corner, yeah. settled for the night. I'm going after this one, you used to say. Ten times a night. Shouldn't you be at home? You've uh, some sort of a party on, haven't you? Won't you be wanted? I'm going after this one. Screaming for dry ginger, yeah? Hi, oh, it's all right. We found half a dozen bottles at the back of the drinks cupboard. They'll probably see us through if Henry doesn't turn up. Do you think he has gone on one of his blinders? Well, I hope not. He might start to prefer it to work. Retire, you mean? Leave Max in charge, assuming, of course, the parent company appoints Max. Well, I wouldn't have thought there was any doubt about that, especially since Ross left. Are there any more things on sticks in here? Oh, thank God. Beginning to give me is that all there is sort of luck. Hey, how much were the tickets? One twenty. The bloke in the denim jacket downed half a bottle of scotch before I came in here. Oh, don't exaggerate. Anyway, the company are paying, aren't they? It's supposed to be an independent group. One of its functions is to attack us if it thinks we're polluting the environment, and I don't mean polluting it with scotch. I got the idea from Max that that was the point of having it here. <sighs> Never understood the issues of Watergate. Used to watch the telly when Nixon was on, and all she could say was. That poor man. <laughs> Can't you leave that stuff till later? You ought to be in there mixing. Where's Mum? She's gone upstairs to rest. Rest? I don't think she would face the scrum in there. Scum? Scrum, love. S C R U M. As in football. Yeah, a rugby, actually. She thought we were insulting her friends. There are some very intelligent people in there, as a matter of fact, as you'd soon find out if you care to join them. Did Father tell you what Rastrix are taking? Ah, it'll be what they said originally, I assume. It's to be hoped so. There's damn little other business about. I just wonder why he had lunch with John Foster, that's all. You're going after this one. Who says I'm going? I do. You know why. Do I? His guns, twitching tongues, clacking from here to high rig, fell. Nothing to show for it, except a name. I got it too, you know. From who? My lot. They can clack as well as empty, but I can't they can. Enjoyed it, did you? Mm -hmm. Not a bit of that, did you? You're like Jean. You think you got me all sewn up? I saw her once in Stennard Market not long after. She smiled at me. Now there's a woman I thought. You were right. There's plenty more pops around. You'll not miss this one. I used to sop in here when your mother ruled. My dad he used to sit in this corner with his shoulder to the wall like I am now. If I looked behind me, I could see dead men's faces living. It's part of what I am. You have lipstick on your cheek. Huh? Uh -oh. I had lunch with John Foster of Rastrix. That's his colour lipstick, is it? Ah, oh, that bitch she's married to, did it? She doesn't like men. Put some mark on them, hoping they'll forget to wipe it off. Goodbye, Henry, she says. Nice to see you. Hoping your missus will see it when you get home. <laughs> Yours didn't, unless she saw it and said no. Yeah. <laughs> Had a bit of a laugh to herself, knowing you. What was she cast from, gold? She said it could come here, you know. What about me? Don't I get a say? Sarah said you couldn't face the scrum. A bit of a headache. It'll pass. They won't miss me down there. I don't think most of them know who I am. Oh, you 
Everyone in the village knows who you are. Oh, from the village, I only recognize the Barrett and young Les Turner. Incomers, most of them. They buy a view, then become conservationists to defend it. The right deed for the wrong reason. <laughs> it hasn't changed all that much, you know, in the village. Not since I was young. Most of the changes have happened in the in the last 20 years or so. You look pale. Do I? I don't get out in the garden as much as I used to do. The, the weather hasn't been good enough lately, anyway. I do love the sun. Why don't you have a holiday, hmm? If the sun won't come to us, go and find it. We've had our holiday. No, we have. Have another. Why not? I have the greatest difficulty in persuading your father to take one holiday. Go without him. Get one of your friends to go with him. I couldn't do that. Why not? I wouldn't want to. Anyway. Marriage. What a cage it is. You spend years locked up in it, and then when the kids have grown up and the doors open, you're free to go. What do you do? You stay right where you are. You think I stayed with him just for you and Dot and Ross, do you? Why didn't you? Don't most people. What wrong assumptions you make. You don't really know us very well, do you? Is it like that with you? With you and... and Sarah? Maybe. Some of the time. How much of the time? More than it used to be. Why do you assume it's so with your father and me? Well, I have nothing in common. You don't know that! When I was away at school and he brought you to see me, I used to long for you to be able to come on your own. Why? He embarrassed me. And, and not his accent. I'm not that kind of snob. A kind of coarseness, I suppose. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I'd like to rest, if you don't mind. No, you're angry with me. You don't see it, do you? If you can't return his... affection... Affection? It was always there. If you wanted it. More than you, obviously, now. Was it? I wonder if it'll still be there when it comes to the crunch with me like it did with Ross. What is this crunch that you all seem obliged to experience? He won't let go, will he? I see. Oh, God! Men and your work. As if there were nothing else in life. He damn well won't let go. I don't remember that that was Ross's complaint. When it came to the, the crunch? Indirectly it was. He wanted father to change to his and or Ross's way of doing things. More consultation with the men, industrial democracy, a soft option in a hard world. Not your way of doing it. No, things. it damn well isn't. I don't understand. If, if Henry went against Ross for reasons you approve of, what's your complaint against him? Max? He's drifted the other way over the last five years or so. He sounds more like Ross every day. I see. Do you? This coarseness you speak of in your father. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe insensitivity would have been a better word. Stick to your guns, Max. Coarseness, you said. He didn't have the education you had, you know. Your father got where he is because he worked for it. He's made the point himself at regular intervals. That was his. The University of Life. Don't belittle me. He belittles me. He holds me back. Let me rest. He'd pack it in if you really wanted him to. You can have that holiday. Go and find the sun. Oh, God, you're angry with me because I said it was coarse. Max, Max, she says she wants to rest. That's sex that wants equality. How do you propose to survive when you won't even face the realities of life? You men and your work, she said, as if there were any other way. People like Ross support you. They want women to be equal because they think it'll make them equal too. Equal. <laughs> free. Free of the need to face reality. Max, Max, she's ill. Jean. Mother. Ill? She was just tired, she said. Get a doctor. I said it's a con. When we've joined you lot in screwing up inflation to the point where the bloody system collapses, we'll be back at a plumber's rate, union approved. I wasn't born yesterday. Alice wants to put up for convener at the plant to take over for me. He does, does he? Oh, he said nothing to me. One of his mates told me. You're going to make room for him? I'm not ready for it yet. Neither is he. And you aren't, are you? Ready to take him on, I mean. You'll find him a different kettle of fish from me, you know. Oh, so you think I do know something, then, eh? Huh? You know what I've taught you. You cheeky book. 
Oh, I picked up a certain amount from you and all. Ah. Uh, a certain amount. We've learned from each other. We came in between, didn't we? In between a couple of bloody hard cases like your dad and mine. And what we bred between us. We taught them not about human nature, though, did we? Shoved them into schools and left it to teachers. And half of them are there because they can do out else. They go from being pupils to masters and from one school to another. They know not about life. It'll be for you, I reckon. They'll have heard you've been seen in Sodom. Fine woman. Aye. Ah. And that's someone else we worked out on. You worked out for it? I'm like you. Yeast is still doing its job, frothing away on top, but uh, it's as flat as a pancake underneath. <laughs> it's flesh that lets you down, all talk and no bloody performance. There's a visitor for you what? at your mother's. Good night. That the last of them? Aye, I think so. How is she? Dr. Fawcett's with her now. Dot up there. Hmm? Yes, yes, she's on. Oh, yeah. What about Henry? Shouldn't he be told? Do you know where he is? I'm damned if we're going to rush around the countryside looking for father at this stage. Well, I think you should. He should have been here. You've got the car keys, haven't you? They're in my bag. Sarah. What if they take her away? Well, Doc will go with her. We can follow when you get back. You weren't to know that she was ill. You warned me to drop it, didn't you? And I went on, didn't I? I went on. He's off looking for Henry. I was getting rather drunk until this happened. I feel terribly sober now. Ah, it's probably going to be a sobering time for all of us. Well, shouldn't Ross be sent for? He's abroad, isn't he? No, oh, you'd better wait and see. Henry will know what to do when he's heard what Fawcett has to say. We're a bit out of it, aren't we, you and me? The off Cumdens, the non Brassingtons. <laughs> We're Brassingtons by adoption, adoption by marriage. Not the easiest family to become a part of. Or maybe you don't agree. No, I do agree. Of course I do. Oh, it's certainly not been easy for me, in spite of what people say. What do people say? Working class background. Married the managing director's daughter. Now I'm the works manager. You can't get away from it, can you? Henry once told me you got that job on merit, only you'd be the last person to believe it. It's all in the mind, you see. I'm not all that ambitious, as a matter of fact. Dot wanted me to have the job more than I wanted it myself. <laughs> She's got some image of me that doesn't include any of the things you and I both care about. Music, mm. books... If the fascists took over as they did in Germany and burned all the books on the streets, she'd wonder why they bothered what all the fuss was about. <laughs> oh, they're all Philistines, these Brassingtons, Ross included. You know, the only reading Max ever does is the Financial Times. <laughs> he'd nominate the shares index for the Nobel Prize for Literature if he was on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> you pretend not to care, but you do, don't you? Not as much as you, maybe. Oh, I can switch it all off. Enjoy being a Philistine. Almost. Especially in bed. Oh, now I've spoiled your image of me, haven't I? Well, that's uh, true for a lot of people, isn't it? For you? Oh, to some extent, I suppose, <laughs> I. <laughs> well, take Henry, for example. I love him as he is, but he's the biggest Philistine of the lot. Oh, but he's deep. Deeper than the sea sometimes. Understanding him's like trying to read a book in a language you only half know. I've... I see. Who's this young stranger from paradise? Granddad. Granddad, he says. Do I know him? Looks a bit like young Guy Brassington, but it can't be Guy Brassington. Because he's at school 200 miles from here. 
So it can't be a young guy brushing them, can it? I've left. Left? Left what? The Boys Scouts, Transport and General Workers Union, the Catholic Church? I've left school, Grandad. Oh, it, it is young guy Brassington. I, I can recognize him, the shape of him through the muck. What are you doing here? How did you get here? I walked a bit, then I hitched. Thumbed it, do you mean? Most of it. Why? I had enough money for the train. Why did you leave school, I mean? I don't like it, Grandad. You don't like it. I see. He's right not to like it. I don't like you coming bloody ladders, but I've got to put up with it, haven't I? I've told you before about your language in this house. On your way home, are you? Yes, Grandad. Thought you'd get your great-grandmother to speak for you first, did you? I'll speak for him. Well, you waste your breath. Our Max is not as soft as I am, and I'm considered to be a bloody hard case. Oh, shh! What did you do that for? I'll do it again if you mention that word again in this house. Not in front of lad and all. They know more words than we do. They invent them. You better get up to the bathroom and get some of that muck off your face before I take you home. Yes, Grandad. I told you to go upstairs and wash your face as well as your hands. Hands come before faces. What's up with yours? Hitting me with that stick in front of him. And to be treated like a man, you should behave like one. It's a fine thing when he has to come here because he don't go home where he belongs. He belongs back at school. Treat him soft, they grow soft. His father didn't like it, but he stuck it out. Him, you're always complaining about it's your man. Damned hard world, mother. You learn it early or you learn it late. The earlier you learn it, the better you cope. Dad. Oh. I went to the Black Lion. They said you'd be here. Ah, Dorothy sent you, I suppose, wants me on parade, does she? Your lad's upstairs. Dad. Your lad's upstairs. He's run away from school. That can wait. Don't you care? It's Mum. She's ill. Ill? Your mother? The doctor, sir. Ill? It's a stroke. Who came? Fawcett. That bloody old woman. Where's Bowdler? Holiday. Well, can't we get somebody else? Why? He may be an old woman, but he knows when there's nothing to be done. Who said there's nothing to be done? It was obvious from what he said. You heard him, didn't you? You heard what he said. Will he be back yet? Unless he's been called out again. Sure. Downstairs. Get him on the phone for me. I'll be down in a minute. Take Dorothy with you. She'll come back. Yes, you'll come back. You've had a shot. Uh, just go and have five minutes alone. She doesn't like the curtains drawn, even at night. I bet you didn't know that, did you? She likes to wake up to the view. And we're not overlooked, so I don't know why we bother with the damn thing. I'm going down now. You'll stop. Mum, I'll talk to you later. Hungry? Wait. Go and see what you can find in the kitchen. Dr. Fawcett? Yeah, hold the line a minute, will you, please? Fawcett, Brassington. Yes. Yes, I know. How bad is it? No, I, I look, I, I must know. There's a reason. I see, yes. Yes. No, no, I, I'm obliged to. Yes, I'll be here. Thank you. I was right. Yes, you were right. Oh, God. Look, I asked Sarah to take you out for a reason. Listen, some years ago, your Aunt Ethel died. It was the same thing. Well, she lasted for days, though. I used to go and sit with her. I was fond of her. She'd been good to me when I was a lad. She didn't even know I was there, lying on the bed with her eyes closed, never moving a muscle. But I went because she'd been good to me. I'd sit with her for an hour or so, on my own sometimes. Sometimes there were others. I remember one day I went and there was two old biddies from next door sitting by our bed, gassing away as though she wasn't there, and enjoying it. Well, they did in their day. It was something happening in life. Death. And they were saying the sort of thing that you were starting to say 
Up there. Nothing to be done. Question of time. Better sooner than later. And would her lad get back from Canada in time? And she lay there with her eyes closed, never a whisper. She was there, and yet she wasn't there, so they talked about her as though she were a post. And listening to them bury her with words, I got the idea that she could hear. She could hear every word that they were saying. I sat listening inside her head, listening. And I started to fight. I started to fight back against what they were saying. I started to do what I'm going back to do up there. She can't hear us. How could she? Well, you couldn't bear it any more than I could. Do you know what goes on inside my head? Most times, <laughs> it's the same as what goes on outside. I'm that kind of a chap, but sometimes, sometimes there are things go on you wouldn't even recognize. No, 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 I've told you this so that you won't do the same when you go back again. I believe it or not. I can't. I won't. I had to tell you for her sake. My aunt's lad came back from Canada. He came into the room, sat by her bed, took her hand in his, and her fingers closed round it. And she hadn't moved a muscle for a week. <laughs> she died that night. <laughs> and Spoken to Dr. Fawcett. Oh, bloody nonsense, what Dorothy said. Ah, she was overwrought. It's understandable. She'll come around eventually. Could be none the worse, he says. Could be none the worse. And when she does, she's to have peace and quiet. There must be nothing to worry her, do you understand? When she's a bit better, I'll take her away somewhere. Italy happened. She's always wants to see Italy. Greece. Happens she'd like to go to Greece as well. Max. You must let her believe that everything's all right, normal. You must let him try for her sake. I'll want to be with your mother when she comes round. You're going to run into problems next week. You better start thinking about it now. Rastrix, I've got a strike on at the Farmdale job. They'll not be taking anything like what we expected. The chances are it might be nothing at all. You bet, better get together with Neil tomorrow and look at the consequences. I'll have to leave it to you two to see what you think's best to be done. In any case, it's high time you and I started to trust one another. It's been a blight in her life, the battles between you and me. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. I don't know where we went wrong, you and me, but oh, we went bloody wrong somewhere along the line. When you were a lad, I dare say, that's usually where it starts. You reach a certain age and you start to kick. Oh, I know. I did my share kicking your granddad. But it didn't wear off with us, you and me, did it? Or with Ross, neither, but that, that was something different. I'm saying it's not too late to make a fresh start. That's what she wants. Now, you do understand me, don't you? Yes, I understand. 
You've always thought I've not done right by your mother. Well, I'm misunderstandable too. You care for her. That's in your favour. I wouldn't have it otherwise, but she'd tell you different. Not because I've been perfect, but because she's taken me all round for what I am. You expect more from me than you do f from yourself and your own wife. Damned if I can see why. We've both been blessed as far as marriage is concerned. You're on the way to making two big mistakes, as I see it. You think I'm worked out. And you think, in the second place, that your marriage is worked out. Oh, I don't think your mother and me don't know what goes on. We've been through it. There was a time when you were a lad when we could barely stand the sight of each other. I used to put my walking boots on and take off over the high rig just to get out of it. I don't know what she did. Your fault, mainly. Well, yours and Dot's and our Rosses. There were never a moment when one of you wasn't giving us a bloody nightmare. It wasn't just the way we brought you up, though I know it's fashionable to put it down to that. It wasn't just that, though. You all had a streak of the devil in you, each in your own individual way. The devil. I used to say you'd been bloody well sent to try us, and by God, I meant it. And yet I didn't want to send you off to that boarding school. Don't ask me why. At first Christmas, when you all came back, having been away a term, I went into the kitchen Christmas Eve after you'd all gone to bed. Your mother was in there doing her stuff. <laughs> the last person on God's earth she wanted in there was me. She was stood by the window looking out at the view. Aye, it was dark, but she used to paint her own pictures at night, does your mother. She was stood at the window looking out the side of her face to me. I've fancied other women in my time, more than one. Something in a woman's eyes, the way she holds herself, the way her hair hangs, as if you were looking at something precious you'd lost. I stood at the kitchen door looking at her as she stood there, lost in whatever it was she was seeing out there. Everything I'd ever seen in a woman was standing at that sink. I didn't say much. I was pretty shy. I happened to remember and a bit like a lad who, who was inexperienced, not too sure of himself. I've been like it ever since, on and off. She knows, though I've never asked her. There's nobody in this world knows me better than she does. <laughs>